Um, and uh, we're going to be talking specifically about uh, women in uh, venture capital and how to break that massive ceiling. And uh, I'm just going to jump right into it, introduce our speakers as they, uh, they've been in the waiting room and ready, ready to get started with us. Uh, so I'd like to introduce um, Hamad Salah, uh, Rasha Tantawi, uh, Head of Entrepreneurship at uh, Teek, uh, Ms. Bah Nagvi, the co-founder and general partner at I2I Ventures, Anna Wonk, Investor Relations Manager at Xperior Venture Fund. Uh, they're going to talk to us about women in venture capital, and uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, what uh, the future looks like uh, in this region. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mark. Uh, it's good to hear your, uh, it's always good to hear your, your voice. And uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, my name is Mo Salah, and I, um, I run Startup Grind at, in Jordan, and uh, also run uh, seed Star, one of the Seedstar's accelerators in Jordan, too. Uh, Today's panel is uh, something that I've been looking forward to for weeks now, and uh, it's always uh, close to my heart to, to have such uh, amazing uh, ladies uh, over. Anyway, uh, I know there's a lot of Europeans here, and if anyone uh, is a Dutch, congrats to Max, the first Formula One uh, championship uh, ever. So I'm just going to go jump into our speakers and uh, hopefully there's no Mercedes fans in the room that I'm assuming they would dislike me big time for saying that. But uh, let, let's start with uh, Ms. Bah. Go ahead and please introduce yourself, what you guys do at I, I2I Ventures and your journey uh, from the beginning till ending up a venture, uh, venture uh, general partner. Thanks, Mo. Lovely to be here with everybody um, and Rasha and Anna as well. Uh, so my name is Visba Nakvi. I have been in venture for, uh, this is coming up to my third year now. Uh, I'm general partner and co-founder of I2I Ventures. We are an early stage VC fund for Pakistan. Uh, we are female founded uh, and led. We are the only female founded and led fund in Pakistan. Uh, and I know very, one of very few in the region. Hope to change that. So hopefully that's going to change soon. Um, but my partner and I actually uh, focus on investing in early stage tech companies, uh, working with founders that are solving big problems. We don't invest only in women, although because we're women, people often think we only invest in women. Uh, but we love women founders and we look for them. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I, I know more a little bit later in the conversation. Um, just in terms of my background, I myself have been in finance for the last 23 years. I've worked in corporate finance and corporate banking. I've uh, done impact investing, and I've also worked for a fintech startup myself, uh, working across different frontier and emerging markets. So kind of had a bit of experience, uh, non-linear path to venture. Uh, my partner actually started Pakistan's first startup accelerator program a decade ago. Uh, and so Kulsum actually founded Invest to Innovate, which is our sister company. And all the work that we've done there with founders led us to set up a fund a few years ago. Uh, so look forward to sharing more and learning more about everybody else as well. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's go to Russia. Russia, um, um, introduce yourself. What you what, what do you do on a daily basis uh, at work and what you guys do uh, for female entrepreneurs in Egypt? Hello, everybody. It's uh, always a pleasure to be uh, on the stage of Startup Borders and an honor being with the these female uh, speakers. Um, so I work, I'm heading entrepreneurship at the Technology Innovation Entrepreneurship Center. It's part of a bigger organization called ITIDA and ITIDA is mandated to grow the ICT sector in general in, in, um, in Egypt, but the center is mandated to enable entrepreneurship and innovation uh, with a focus on tech startups. Um, so we have uh, a whole, you know, portfolio of initiatives that we do along the value chain. Um, more focused um, to our panel here is um, what we do for females. So we have a, um, a program uh, for female entrepreneurs, and it was um, it started off at five years ago when we wanted to increase the pool of uh, female-led uh, startups uh, in Egypt. Um, this year, we have reached 14% of the number of female-led startups of the total number of, 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 uh, of startups in Egypt. Again, and this is in tech startups because that's the, our focus. 
Um, it is very humble, but it's, uh, you know, we're trying. Uh, we work with, um, we're still working at the beginning of the, at the, the pool, so at the ideation stage. Um, we run hackathons that are focused on women uh, and also um, targeting challenges uh, faced by women. We also have another program which takes them from ideation to business modeling. And um, in the past year, we've also tried to um, uh, support the first, um, the initiation of the first angel, uh, women angel network in Egypt, it's called TIA. And why support? Because we don't believe that the government should be running angel funds, but um, just um, acting as an enabler. Um, and currently, because there, we find there, there are a lot of you know business women who joined the network, but we found out that they're not investing because of lack of knowledge. So now we're working on uh, sort of an academy to help them understand more and maybe co-invest with other men so that they can get this task of knowledge. <laughs> That's in a nutshell. Thank you, Russia. I'll just go, just go um, um, straight to Anna. Sure. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for inviting me to that conference. I mean, I'm very happy to represent a little bit of a European voice on that. I'm the head of community of European Women in VC, which is a platform joining together around 1,000 members, um, being on the market for four years, founded by two general partners of a venture capital firm led by female, which was the very first venture fund. Uh, founded in Europe by just two ladies, and I'm the part of that uh, team also. And currently, we're doing quite a bit of um, work on the European level towards fighting the gender gap in financing, both for venture capital firms and startups led, led by female. We're doing a few, uh, let's say, actions together with the European Commission on that, formed the group uh, constructed of 26 general partners from entire European Union, which I'm very happy to be a secretary general of. Um, we are doing all we can uh, to change this, this big systemic problem of um, lack of diversity on venture markets. So let's jump into the discussion. Very looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, so um, just to set the tone, female-led companies received 3.4% of VC money in 2019. That number dropped to 2.3 since the start of the pandemic. And uh, that number is less than 1% in the MENA region and uh, quite, quite outrageous and disturbing numbers. Uh, despite the fact that Boston Consulting Group said that in, when it's come to revenues, female-led companies are driving significantly more revenues than male-led companies. And to the level that those companies are driving around $2 versus every dollar invested in, the, in those companies. So my question will be to Ms. Bah, which is, she's a general partner. What do you think, why do you think that's the case? And how do you make, uh, general partners who are females can address that? Yeah, that is a problem more. And like you said, our region is not, not any better uh, than, than the global trend, unfortunately. I think, I think there are two things. Uh, one is that there are inherent biases, which uh, because in some cases, maybe subconscious people are not aware of. I think we generally need to do a more uh, insight and analysis and self-reflection in terms of uh, you know, even exercises that we could all benefit from, male and female in terms of our inherent biases and what we may be keeping in mind when we evaluate female founders versus male founders. There is research that shows that in pitches, women founders get asked questions which have, which have uh, negative connotations and to which they have to give defensive answers. And their male counterparts get asked questions which have aspirational opportunities and they're able to show a much more positive perspective. I think um, you know, on one hand, it's about training those of us that are on the other side of the table that are writing the checks to try and overcome some of these biases. Uh, at I2I Ventures, we actively look to bring more women into the pipeline where we take a gender lens approach to investing, but we're not a female only focused fund. Yet we are recognized that if we don't go the extra mile by bringing more women into the funnel, if we just wait for them to come to us, we're not going to see the number of women that we would like to see. And eventually they'll get weeded out, uh, you know, uh, just from the numbers game. So I think there's initiatives that we need to take 
on a personal and an institutional level in looking at potential institutional biases. How do we counter them? And I think there needs to be an extra effort even at the ecosystem level to help more women get investment ready, to, to help train them about how to answer some of these questions that may come around. How do women, how can women founders turn around a question that may have unconscious bias in it, but they can recognize that this is taking them down the defensive road of conversation. So I think a lot of those uh, sort of opportunities are there for us globally, as well as uh, even in the region itself. I think as GPs, um, you know, we, being women, we're a little aware of it ourselves. My partner is also, my co-founder and partner, Kulsum Lakhani, is also a woman. So we're Pakistan's only female-founded and led fund. We do feel a big responsibility there. But I think, uh, you know, by showcasing strong female founders, people will start seeing role models there and hopefully be able to aspire towards setting up their own companies as well. Just in terms of statistics, Mo, in Pakistan, if you look at just female founded companies, it's only 1.5% of funds raised this year. But if you look at female co-founded or, or mixed gender teams, we're up at least 35% which is not a very bad number, but again, so, you know, there, there are women there in the space, but I just feel like we need more support in terms of helping them stand alone uh, and not always they need to have a, a male co-founder. Amazing, thank you. Uh, actually, the 35% number you just mentioned about mixed gender companies, that makes you guys somewhere near the United States. In the MENA region, what, the 1% I mentioned is, uh, not only female uh, founders, but it's also mixed gender um, uh, founders. Wow. Looking at the data from 2021, so males only uh, uh, led companies got 99 percent point something of all the money was invested in the region. So I'm just gonna go to to Anna. Anna, you work with GBs from all across Europe. 12 12 percent of the decision makers at VCs. That's only in the United States. I'm assuming the numbers numbers are way down across the world. Are are females? Do you think? Uh, do you think that 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 is big part of what we're we're facing right now, and how we can address such a such a gap, especially when it's come to the processes and the culture of of, of the VC world. Um, you know what, I mean, the European Union or Europe with uh, European Union with associated countries, I, I think should be very ashamed because what we believe and we sort of estimate it's a single digit percent of female GPs. And that's not as shocking as the amount of um, assets under management they're holding um, in hands. I mean, so that is a huge systemic problem. What we believe, and this is what the agenda we are trying to push with the groups of um, of general partners or female general partners in Europe is that if you do, do not deploy a substantial amount of funds with a diversity strategy going from top down, you're not going to change anything. I mean, um, despite of the fact that you are losing money as an investor, that this is not a moral crisis, this is a financial crisis and something should be done. And what we have done so far is um, in July this year, we handed over something which was a, in the form of a white paper petition signed by over a thousand people from the market saying that you need at least three things to fix, um, to fix that huge gender gap all across the sectors, right? Sector, not only on the top or startup level, but just to change a systemic problem. And the idea of that was to deploy around 3 billion euros to funds uh, led by female or co-led by female general partners um, with the diversity strategy. So looking at um, emerging managers from the diversity perspective. So that would pretty much le lead to forming 80 new funds with a female general partner, right? And having that um, idea in mind that um, a few years ago, there was a study ran that female general partners invest three times more into female founders and female founders as entrepreneurs uh, employ six times more ladies into senior positions at their companies. I mean, hello, you have the systemic problems done, done here, right? Because female will take care of female on the market. So 3 billion was one of the, uh, one of the ideas, right? To look at that problem from the top-down approach, not only stick at 
the level, but look at the people who are actually writing checks. So this is what we are sort of trying to fight, um, fight with right now, because so far in Europe, all the taxpayer money are deployed without any diversity strategy, any. Trust me, there is no single fund of funds which has um, um, either the assessment criteria turned towards that. I mean, they don't have anything like that. And looking at the US data, and I'm quite sure it's the same for European Union, so almost 70% of venture capital firms in, in, um, in the United States led by women, they score in top quartiles, I mean, every time when it comes to returns. So, I mean, this is the time when we sort of push towards fixing the gap, and then later on, we're just going to be beneficiaries of that. So that's pretty much what we have. Um, to say and what are our asks so far. Thank you, Anna. I'm just gonna go jump to, to Russia because Russia somehow works for the government or for a government arm in a way or another. And Anna mentioned a very critical point when it's come to funds of funds and government related LBs, which is most probably investing our tax money. Do you think, uh, what do you think the role the regulation can play here? when it's come to either female uh, uh, general partners or female founders and how that can be achieved in non necessary in Egypt or in our region, but globally. Um, I'm not a very big fan of quotas. Uh, I always thought they were unfair, but um, honestly, they do get the, a lot of things done. They, they change mindsets. So, and I'm going to give you an example. So in Egypt, a couple of years ago, uh, there was a, a new law, which any, um, any company that wanted to IPO had to have 20, I think, or 25% of the board women. And, you know, all of a sudden we had people coming and asking, do you know somebody? Do you know somebody? It's like as if they were hidden. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, funny. And um, the, the second thing that is that is important to you is um, success stories. So they don't know about them. They, were, they started looking for these females just because there was a law. So we need to highlight the, uh, these successes, these successful women. Not only do they... Um, like Anna was saying about revenue, but also the job creation, the number of jobs they create around them is, 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 is very important to highlight. So these are two things, uh, but again, there are, are lots of mechanisms the government can use. They can, you can do co-investing uh, simply by uh, co-investing with angel networks, even, I, I don't mean uh, females, but male, male angels. And if they uh, invest in a female-led startup, uh, you would uh, the government co come in and co-invest. This would um, kind of force them into looking into female-led uh, startups. Um, th there's there's a lot of there's a lot the government can do at this point for uh, just to change the mindset because I think the problem here is more of uh, a mindset and a culture barrier, um, not lack of funds at, or or lack of startups. Oh, wow. Uh, it's good to, good to hear that. And uh, it's very funny hearing that uh, male dominated ports are looking for females for the sake of just having them there for yeah. regulations. <laughs> it does change the it does change the mindset, but it's just very sad in a country like Egypt, where I know easily hundreds of great females who have raised millions of dollars or managed major corporates that we hear such thing. Yeah, but you know, Mo, the fact that the government now has a big number of uh, women ministers has also so changed. Yeah, that, that, that's definitely changed the narrative yes. big time. <laughs> what, what, for example, uh, I think I think that in the current cabinet, the country have over than six or seven female ministers, which is... In, in major ministries, yes. And that, that yeah. makes a big change, really. It sends a clear message and it highlights role models and... and um, young women also look up to them you know this is reachable so it's this is also a very a very important i'm just gonna go to spa uh, i i hate to say that but i do believe that's a very the world we live in is success by design uh, and and it's not gonna change anytime soon no most probably not in our ages 
I'm not saying we're old, but the, the issue is too massive to be solved in our ages. Do you, what do you think female founders should do to navigate the current VC world? Because as I said, I don't think it will change anytime soon, at least yeah. significantly. Look, I think, uh, look, at the end of the day, I think women need to be a little bit more aggressive about accessing resources. Um, and also, uh, it's about storytelling. And I believe the storytelling can be learned. It's a skill that you can hone, you can learn it, you can get better at it. I think uh, very often women, uh, you know, by nature sort of step back a little and not necessarily uh, talk up a big game. Sometimes men are more comfortable doing that. But I think it's I think storytelling can be learned by male and female founders. And I think the kinds of support programs that accelerators, incubators, government programs, universities, and others can do to help women access such uh, skill building opportunities, I think that's really going to help. And that's really at the beginning of the of this whole conversation, right? Like women kind of uh, getting into this conversation of investing uh, investors potentially. Our sister company, for example, uh, which is Invest to Innovate, which runs an accelerator program uh, amongst many of the other programs. One of the programs they're running right now is in partnership with the World Bank. It's called We Raise, and it's with the in the Women in Finance Initiative. And they, the whole goal of the program is to find female founders that are already running businesses, but help them get investment ready. So programs like that can help women not only gain confidence, but access the same kinds of programs that men often, you know, get through their networks. I think the other thing is that, uh, you know, to both uh, Russia and Anna's point is about is the level of self-selection and role models. When you start seeing more women raising money, more women uh, in growing their firms, more women out there in the public eye, more women fund managers, then you start self-selecting and saying, hey, that's something I can aspire towards as well. Uh, so I think it, there's, there's a bit of onus on those of us that are already doing some of these things to maybe go out and mentor and find younger women uh, or, or more junior women that we can support and help uh, you know, address some of these uh, uh, sort of apprehensions that they may have. I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, you can, if it's your company, you should know everything about it. Um, and I don't think women should get intimidated when there's an aggressive male investor potentially in front of them asking them questions. Um, always remember that you know your business, your own business better. Of course, there's a balance between listening to feedback and understanding what's coming at the other end of the table. But if that is coming from a point of bias and uh, potential uh, sort of, uh, you know, sexism there, then I think women need to start getting trained better to address those and switch the conversation or, or try and put their best foot forward. Um, I think for those of us that are in the venture space, there is a, whether, whether male or female, there is a requirement, there's a responsibility on us to actively look for women. Like I said earlier, we, we try to do that at I2I Ventures. Uh, out of eight investments that we've made in the last two years, four have been female founded or co-founded. Um, and that's because we've actually gone out and said, who are the great women out there that are doing great stuff? So I think for women to be able to connect with investors as well, there might be investors looking for good women. So I think, you know, it, it, there's a little bit of networking that could be done. There's a little bit of putting yourself out there. And like I said earlier, storytelling and, and of course, and just, you know, knowing your business just as much as anybody else would uh, is important. Uh, thank you, Musbah. Um... I, I know we don't have much of time, um, but, but, but I just wanna just wanna uh, say one thing. Um, your what you're saying about sexist questions is not a claim. It's it's scientifically proven. Yes. Uh, it, there's a research from from Stanford that says that and actually states the, those questions. Mm -hmm. um, one in in less than a minute, please. Uh, what would be your advice to the ladies who are starting jobs at VCs? today, because you know that's one of the most important elements of addressing that gap. I think I think women need to own their power. We bring a lot to the table, sometimes a lot more multidimensional aspects than potentially males do. And I think our sort of, which often gets put in a soft box, which is the gut or the feeling for certain things that, that might be a female in, intuition, uh, is something that you should pay attention to. I think you just have to work as hard as the next person. I don't think there's any shortcuts. I also don't believe in quotas. I don't think we should bring women up the curve just because they're women. But I think we need to remove barriers for smart women to keep going. And I think for smart women who are in VC or might be working with funds, you know, just do do what needs to be done to, to uh, you know, build that uh, track record, to get your skills honed up 
Uh, and then again, you know, reach out to others, meet other people, learn from others that are already there. There are a lot of, we're part of this group called Transact and they're fantastic female GPs, you know, over 200 across the world. And honestly, it's been such a great support system. So I think for women that are in the VC space, like look for peers that might have experiences where you can learn from them. Um, and also just like put in the hard work, there are no shortcuts, uh, but I think there's a lot that you can learn potentially from other women uh, and look for mentors where you can help navigate, they can help you navigate some aspects of uh, potential hurdles. Anna, do you want to add to those advisors? I know it's very hard now, Ms. Bah, like covered everything. <laughs> but I know I wish that previously is that, I mean, you do not, do not have to start from having women there at now at this spot, but if you are setting KPIs as a GP, and if you make your portfolio companies to set KPIs, to actually go out there and look for very, very, very good assets, such as ladies in the market, then you are actually on the right track to help fixing that um, that problem, right? But my advice was pretty much it's exactly the same as Ms. Bach. I mean, look for role models, look for friends in the market, not necessarily ladies, because there are guys out there who absolutely believe in this kind of agenda, and they really, really are supporting the equality on the market. So if you have role models like that, you're going to feel stronger. You're going to know there are people like you there in the market with the same mindset. So, I mean, be open, just look around and, and do not give up. So that's my uh, advice. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Russia, uh, you're one of a few um, ladies in the top of the, the chain and the management of in the tech sector in Egypt. What would, would be your advices to females who are either starting companies in the tech sector or just navigating the government system? It's like what I tell all women, just be aggressive. They're, they're not aggressive enough and somehow they kind of become a little bit meek in the presence of um, males. <laughs> so just, just be aggressive. They don't bite. <laughs> Get out there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, what a way to end the battle. We don't, please don't bite. Um, okay. I hope I hope all females feel the same about males, the same when you fear Russia, because that's that would be actually pretty amazing. But unfortunately, that's not the case, and uh, a lot of females are there are struggling, and big parts of their struggle is is males. But as, as, as Russia said, at least at work now, the, the space for males to bite it has been minimized massively. And, um, and I do believe uh, if that happened, I encourage every woman to go public. We're here for you, males and females. Call them out because we need them out of the system and make sure you're, uh, we, as, as Anna said, or Ms. Bah, I can't, I, I can't remember, Ms. Bah, just let's remove the barriers for small women to to go up and uh, and and do great stuff, Russia, Anna, uh, and Ms. Bah, it was an honor and a pleasure to spend the past I think hour with you guys because we we had a little chat before the start <laughs> of the panel, and I look forward to um, to having you guys uh, anytime soon at either Startup Without Borders, which is we're very proud to be partnered with, or at Startup Grind. Have a good night, everyone. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you very much. very much for having us. Bye. -bye. Bye.